And you're good to go, Father. Thank you, Rachel. Good morning, everyone. Happy Saturday. Hey, I was thinking it was really nice not to have coffee yesterday because then I could go do other things. <clears throat> so I'm thinking that maybe in the future, we now have coffee on weekdays except Thursday, Friday. And I think that might be like the uh, part of the, <clears throat> a, what, what would you call it? A, a compromise between having coffee and not having coffee. I think Thursday, Friday, eh, still thinking about it, we'll see. But I think we're good. And I definitely like having coffee on Saturday though. Even though not a lot of people come on Saturday, here we are, um, it's also kind of an important day because we pretty much never have the opportunity to have mass on Saturday. So there's never the opportunity to talk about the stuff on Saturday. I mean, because when we go to mass on Saturday, it's usually for Sunday or for a wedding or something else, some other kind of giant celebration. Today, for example, right now, right now in the church, we have also, again, First Communions. We had First Communions last week. We have First Communions this week. We have First Communions right now and also at 11. This is the kind of, this is the season that we're in, after all. Anyway. It's a beautiful time and we should we should dig in. We should do these things and, and I enjoy them and I hope you do too. Queen of heaven rejoice, alleluia, for he whom you did merit to bear, alleluia, has risen as he said, alleluia. Pray for us to God, alleluia. Rejoice and be glad, O Virgin Mary, alleluia, for the Lord has truly risen, alleluia. Let us pray. O God, who gave joy to the world through the resurrection of thy son, our Lord Jesus Christ, Grant, we beseech thee that through the intercession of the Virgin Mary, his mother, we may obtain the joys of everlasting life. Through the same Christ our Lord. Amen. Great. And now let's sing it. Regina Celi, letare, alleluia. Quia quemeru isti portare, alleluia. Resurrexit sicut ixit. Alleluia, ora pro nobis Deum, Alleluia. Great. Hey, this morning I want to talk about something kind of funny. So <clears throat> in the calendar of the history of things, you know, there's always the rest of the story in there, kind of a, you know, kind of a Paul Harvey-esque thing. And um, today is one of those days. This is not part of the calendar of saints, really, but it is interesting in the history of, of things. Um, we'll talk about it more in a second, but St. Michael the Archangel. There's a wonderful story about him on May 8th. Here we are. Anyway, let's dig in. In the name of the Father, and of the Son, and of the Holy Spirit. Amen. Let us pray. Almighty and eternal God, who through the regenerating power of baptism have been pleased to confer on us heavenly life. Grant, we pray, that those you re render capable of immortality by justifying them may, by your guidance, attain the fullness of glory. Through our Lord Jesus Christ, your Son, who lives and reigns with you in the unity of the Holy Spirit, God, forever and ever. Amen. The reading from the Acts of the Apostles. Paul al reached also Derby and Lystra, where there was a disciple named Timothy, the son of a Jewish woman who was a believer, but his father was a Greek. The brothers in Lystra and Iconium spoke highly of him, and Paul wanted him to come along with him. On account of the Jews of that region, Paul had him circumcised, for they all knew that his father was a Greek. As they traveled from city to city, they handed on to the people for observance the decisions reached by the apostles and presbyters in Jerusalem. Day after day, the churches grew stronger in faith and increased in number. They traveled through the Phrygian and Galatian territory because they had been prevented by the Holy Spirit from preaching the message in the province of Asia. When they came to Mysia, they tried to go on into Bithynia, but the spirit of Jesus did not allow them. So they crossed through Mysia and came down to Tros. During the night, Paul had a vision. A Macedonian stood before him and implored him with these words, come over to Macedonia and help us. When he had seen the vision, 
we sought passage to Macedonia at once, concluding that God had called us to proclaim the good news to them. The word of the Lord. Thanks be to God. Let the earth cry out to God with joy. Let all the earth cry out to God with joy. Sing joyfully to the Lord, all you lands. Serve the Lord with gladness. Come before him with joyful song. Let all the earth cry out to God with joy. Know that the Lord is God. He made us. His we are. His people, the flock he tends. Let all the earth cry out to God with joy. The Lord is good. His kindness endures forever and his faithfulness to all generations. Let all the earth cry out to God with joy. Alleluia, alleluia. If then you were raised with Christ, seek what is above, for Christ is seated at the right hand of God. Alleluia, alleluia. The Lord be with you and with your spirit. A reading from the Holy Gospel according to John. Glory to you, O Lord. Jesus said to his disciples, if the world hates you, realize that it hated me first. If you belonged to the world, the world would love its own. But because you do not belong to the world, and I have chosen you out of the world, the world hates you. Remember the word I spoke to you, no slave is greater than his master. If they persecuted me, they will also persecute you. If they kept my word, they will also keep yours. And they will do all these things to you on account of my name, because they do not know the one who sent me. The Gospel of the Lord. Praise to you, Lord Jesus Christ. Hey, so the reason why this happens, this little piece of, of the Gospel of John, is it, it doesn't seem like it's really consonant with what we've been hearing otherwise. Like, so this coming Sunday and also yesterday, um, this is my commandment, love one another. The, I, lo I no longer call you slaves, but I call you friends. Um, and then this thing, which is the world will hate you. <laughs> it seems a little bit out of context, um, but the whole thing about, remember this whole thing is not so much about like really fixed and firm and direct marching orders, which it is a little bit, but mostly it's about the Lord uh, saying how close he is to the Father and preparing, remember, this is the whole, like the big scope of this, the Holy Spirit. So this also happens to be that this, these pericopes, this, this long pericope really of uh, John 14, 15, 16, this, this stuff, tomorrow's gospel from, for, you know, for Sunday also happens to be like right in the middle of all of these th things. So it's like the rehashing of what we've been talking about this week. And this is the important thing to remember out of it, that it's about the coming of the Holy Spirit. It's about identification with the Father. And <clears throat> also, therefore, when the Lord says that the world will hate you because it does not recognize my Father, what he's saying there has a lot to do with the identification of the followers of Christ with Christ with the Father. There's a, there's a kind of like a commutative property of discipleship. Remember, remember that from math, you know, when we were kids, a commutative property where like if you move things around, it still works. That. <laughs> there's, there's also kind of maybe a chain rule going on. That's because of the more, more advanced math where really it's, it's very directly kind of through this particular line. The Father through the Son to the whole to the disciples, and the Holy Spirit comes in this as well. It's not like it's not it's not a direct line though, because sometimes we think of it that way too. Like the Father to the Son to the Holy Spirit to the people. No, not exactly. If the Holy Spirit is kind of like throughout, it's it's, a, it's on both sides of this, and that's also the reason why the Lord is making such. A, kind of a very emphatic teaching about this to remind everyone who hears it that it's the Lord who is the point of contact. It is Jesus who is the point of contact for all. That <clears throat> through Jesus to the Father, but to Jesus, and not just through the Holy Spirit, but with the Holy Spirit in, in, in the whole 
kind of motion of the Holy Spirit and not just like stops on a railroad <laughs> where it's like, now we're stopping at this station and at this station and at this station, not like that at all. So wonderful things to think about and not, and not kind of some kind of idea that because you love me, therefore the world will despise you. That's not exactly it. It's more this other thing, which is because you are part of me, that which is mine is also going to be yours. And of course, the story of any Messiah, any Messiah, I mean, I mean people pop up Messiahs every once in a while. So you're like, oh, this is someone who is... The funny thing is they, they don't often remember how it works with the Messiah, the, the one and only, that the end of the story is kind of a difficult part and doesn't end particularly nicely. But we know better. So there's also this part which is... Yes, to be with the Lord means to also suffer with the Lord. And this is kind of the reason why we have penances to begin with anyway, that the suffering is well, going to happen regardless, but we also have the ability of shaping it a little bit and out of simply love of Jesus to be able to suffer with him in very, very small ways that are not hard. <laughs> yeah, something nice to think about. But what I wanted to talk about today was actually, <clears throat> pardon me, this thing with St. Michael. So um, back in September, at the end of September, we celebrated the Feast of the Archangels, so which is otherwise known as Michaelmas. Today is the other day. Okay, so do you know the story about how, how all this stuff happens? The 29th of September is a day of the dedication of St. Michael. That's called, that's what it's called. And it has a very interesting history of what that is. It begins with a story from a May 8th, and this is like in the fifth century. This is a bit of a, bit of a while ago. And <clears throat> the story is this, in a place called the Gargano, which has a funny name. This is, if you think of Italy as a boot, this is the spur on, on, the, on, the, on the other side. And there's a cave. And the story is this, that a guy um, lost one of his livestock, <laughs> ends up in this cave, impossible to get to from anywhere, and kind of out of mercy for the beast, shoots it with an arrow. But even though he shot the arrow, it didn't make its way to the beast. In fact, it kind of came back right at him. And there was a message of like, no, 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 you're not gonna be killing anything here. This is not a place for killing. And then he somehow takes it to the, to the local bishop, this, this interesting story. And the bishop orders days of fasting and prayer that this interesting sign may be made known, you know, what this means. It's, it's, it's a little bit rustic, as you can tell. This is, this is kind of a rustic story. And <clears throat> in, in that time, uh, there's an apparition of St. Michael to the bishop saying, it was very right of you to stop and pray a little bit because in fact, this place that has been pointed out now is very special to me. This is my place. This is my place in the world that I like. <laughs> and it's, it's kind of a funny, it's not exactly like the, the kind of word or character that we expect from St. Michael, but you know, just go with it. This is the story. And um, then it becomes over time, the, this, this cave is made into a church, the Church of St. Michael. And it was supposed to be dedicated on this 29th of September, but again, an apparition of St. Michael saying like, no, you, you don't dedicate this. I already have, I have dedicated this. You just, you know, enjoy it. This is my place. This is my special place and you can have it. Um, and that's the, that's the, that's kind of the story, more or less the story of the September 29th Michaelmas feast. But it begins with the apparition of St. Michael. That's what today's thing is called on the 8th of May. So this place is pretty cool. It's, it's kind of a little bit interesting in terms of like churches, we think of churches as being structures that are built. And occasionally we have a couple churches which are not built. Like maybe you've heard about those rather magnificent uh, salt caves like in Poland where they have built over time quite the church out of it. Or maybe a, a, a giant otherwise, you know, into the mountain excavation that turns into a church like you i'm sure you've heard of things like this but very seldom is it like it's a cave that's already there that becomes the church and this is this is like the one 
I can't think of a cup. I, I can't think of another one that's certainly not as important as this because this is also, interestingly enough, it has the rank of a basilica. It's not just any old church. It's not just some parish. <clears throat> not that that's bad or anything, but I mean, it has a little bit of weight to it, and so much so that the the day in question, September 29th, the dedication of, is like this is the place, and it's in the universal calendar. There are only a couple of churches that are like that, like the Lateran. That, that one also has a day that is you know, celebrated everywhere in the world, or the local cathedral church is celebrated everywhere in the diocese, but in terms of everywhere in the world, there aren't that many. And so that becomes the Archangel Day. We don't really think of you know, the, the, the heavenly realities kind of um, melting into our normal everyday life, particularly often. And it's probably good that they don't because it'd be a bit overwhelming. Besides, if it, in this particular case, involved an arrow going one way and then suddenly coming back the one who shot it, that's a, probably a bad thing. That was, that was complicated and not very, that, that was a little bit scary. It's good that we do not necessarily have those kinds of experiences with any kind of frequency. But it's also a very worthwhile thing to remember about those angels and what is going on. So what about those angels? Well, we have St. Michael to whom we pray with a little bit of frequency. And, you know, here on coffee, we always end with <clears throat> essentially the St. Michael prayer, which is so beloved of so many people. And, uh, you know, it's, it's, it's for a reason, which is, you know, actually it's a, it's a good thing to pray for, that for, uh, for the protection of angels from that which is evil. Okay, great. If anything, the angels are, of course, very powerful and very capable. And also the reason why they're there is to help us. So for what that is worth, even if they don't have the same kind of really everyday, very clear experience with us that we might have with our friends and neighbors and anyone else, even um, a little bit more ambiguous than the saints sometimes, because the saints we, we, we know and understand because there are other people like us, you know, and then, but angels are not. Then we also have, of course, um, I hope we all have a, a nice, you know, relationship with understanding of devotion to our guardian angel. That's always a wonderful thing to pray with and for, uh, for, for the protection and the guidance, especially the guidance of the guardian angel. And, um, uh, it's not just some kind of frou-frou thing. It's not just some kind of, you know, now we're talking about monkeys with wings or something, but rather, uh, you know, the Lord himself tells us that you know, his angels are always looking at the face of the father and also are watching the steps of his children, you know? So it's a very, I, it, whenever an angel day comes by, it's a very worthwhile thing. Today is one of those days. I went to the Gargano a lot, whenever I could. And so by a lot, I mean like three times when I was living in Italy, uh, because it's a really worthwhile place for pilgrimage, I think. It's a, it's, it's a high up mountain that's right on the sea. So both mountains and sea at the same time, that's kind of fun, pretty, but also interesting. It has, it has a weird feel about it. It's not, whenever I went, it was never particularly overwhelmed by, by pilgrims or tourists or anything but it does have a very particular kind of special piece to it. And the cave is a very rustic thing. It's just a cave that then they've built over kind of the front of it, a building. And the only way to it is it's a very funny thing. Like you, we walk up to this facade of a church and then behind the facade, there's nothing. It's just like a gate essentially that then goes down to a stair that very quickly goes down and around inside the mountain. And there you are at the real church. It's an interesting place. And it does have that other quality, which is hard to describe, even here among friends, that it's special. And you kind of have to see it for yourself to, to understand. It has a quality that's very difficult to explain. So I'm all about St. Michael and his apparition and the funny stories that go along with it. Incidentally, <clears throat> if you ever read, um, you know, that, that, that kind of very trashy thing, um, uh, The Da Vinci Code, <laughs> remember that from a, a couple decades ago? 
You may have heard at that time or from other readings or other things that you may have seen, uh, something about the lay lines that run across the world and especially through Europe, through interesting places. This is one of those places. So there are a couple interesting monuments, for example, to St. Michael. There's another one, a very famous one, which is an island monastery that, you know, every day the, 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 the area around it floods from the sea and suddenly it's cut off, but then the flood you know, goes away because it's a tide and then you can get back, there's a road there that opens up again, otherwise it's covered in water. Mont Saint-Michel in France also one of those interesting places. But the Gargano is a little bit more interesting because it doesn't have the, well, the castle on a mountaintop feel in, like in the midst of, a, on a lake, in, in a, on an island essentially, an occasional island um, that the other one has. It's, it's special. Again, it's, it's, it's not exactly something you can really quite describe. And, you know, the, the ley lines are a little bit nonsensical. In fact, by, by I say a little bit, but I mean a lot nonsensical. Um, but, you know, they are one of those things that people have paid attention to in the past. And it's usually something to it, even if it's a little bit hard to point to, especially with a more 21st century kind of perspective. Anyway, just wanted to share that with you as a thing to think about, uh, just a, an interesting Google search away if you want. Gargano, it has a, it, again, it has a very strange name, G-A-R-G-A-N-O. It sounds like the villain from the Smurfs or something, uh, if you remember that. <laughs> but it's a wonderful thing and today is that day. Great. Anyway, I, I was a, this is a little bit, a little bit fluffy, I'm sorry, but it's also a little bit not. Remember, angels are very much real and with us, and it's worthwhile to remember them from time to time, and today is a good day to do so. So, as we always do, let's bring our prayers together and offer them to the Lord, that he will hear and answer us. For our Holy Father's prayer intention of this month, that those in charge of finance will work with governments to regulate the financial sphere and protect citizen from its dangers. Let us pray to the Lord. Lord, hear our prayer. For parents, that they virtuously raise their children and continue in their vocation guided, strengthened, and comforted by the Holy Spirit. Let us pray to the Lord. Lord, hear our prayer. For the sick, hungry, infirm or oppressed, that they may find help from the Christian faithful and hope in Christ. Let us pray to the Lord. Lord, hear our prayer. For our parish, that we always be blessed with more young families and remain a thriving Catholic community. Let us pray to the Lord. Lord, hear our prayer. For all of us, that God will look kindly on our personal prayers. Let us pray to the Lord. Lord, hear our prayer. And now for the prayers of our community, Sandy asks us to pray for all the First Communion families that they continue their efforts to prioritize faith and church and their families going forward. Let us pray to the Lord. Lord, hear our prayer. Gathering all our prayers into one, let us offer them in the words our Savior gave us. Our Father, who art in heaven, hallowed be thy name. Thy kingdom come, thy will be done, on earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread, and forgive us our trespasses, as we forgive those who trespass against us. And lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil. Amen. Let us pray. Grant us, Lord, we pray, that being rightly conformed to the paschal mysteries, what we celebrate and joy may protect and save us with perpetual power. Through Christ our Lord. Amen. And may the blessing of Almighty God, the Father, and the Son, and the Holy Spirit come down on you and remain with you forever. Amen. Great. Good times. Let's keep praying. Hail, Holy Queen, Mother of Mercy, our life, our sweetness, and our hope. To thee do we cry, poor banished children of Eve. To thee do we send up our sighs, mourning and weeping in this valley of tears. Turn then, most gracious advocate, the eyes of mercy toward us. 
And after this, our exile, show unto us the blessed fruit of thy womb, Jesus. O clement, O loving, O sweet Virgin Mary, pray for us, O Holy Mother of God, that we may be made worthy of the promises of Christ. Let us pray. O God, our refuge and our strength, look down in mercy on your people who cry to you. And by the intercession of the glorious and immaculate Virgin Mary, Mother of God, of St. Joseph, her spouse, of your blessed apostles, Peter and Paul, and of all the saints, in mercy and goodness, hear our prayers for the conversion of sinners and for the liberty and exaltation of our Holy Mother and Church. For the same Christ our Lord. Amen. St. Michael the Archangel, defend us in battle. Be our protection against the wickedness and snares of the devil. May God rebuke him, we humbly pray. And do thou, Prince of the Heavenly Host, by the power of God, cast into hell Satan and all the evil spirits who prowl about the world seeking the ruin of souls. Amen. Most sacred heart of Jesus, have mercy on us. Most sacred heart of Jesus, have mercy on us. Most sacred heart of Jesus, have mercy on us. Great, good times. Well, we have a very busy morning around here. Got to get to it. God bless you all and see you tomorrow. Bye-bye. Have a wonderful weekend.